Good morning and welcome to our Sunday live stream. It's great to have you with us this morning as we gather to worship God together. One of the strange things about this pandemic is it has turned our lounges, our kitchens, our bedrooms into places of worship as we all gather together to worship digitally. Church, which for so long has been so closely associated with one fixed place, a fixed hub of the community, is now spread out in everyone's homes. This did take a bit of getting used to at first. At the beginning of lockdown, I certainly enjoyed being able to gather as church in my pyjamas whilst eating a bacon sandwich. But beyond the novelty, I think there's something prophetic about this way of being church. We are gathering to worship where we are. We are making any place a place of worship. We're bringing worship into the places we spend our everyday lives. Isn't that how it should be anyway? Yes, this pandemic has made it necessary in a slightly different way. But when the curtain was in the temple was torn in two, and when the spirit of the Lord was poured out at Pentecost, worship escaped its borders. It broke out into the world. For us, this means that today there is no one single place where worship can and has to happen. But it also means that today there should be no single place where worship can't and shouldn't happen. So it's great to join with you today, wherever you are, to worship together. In today's live stream, Chris and Joy will be and the Williams family will be leading us in sung worship. We'll be hearing from Dixie as he celebrates his 100th birthday and Sheila will be opening up the Bible for us. But first, we're now going to hear from Lisa as she brings us our all age talk where we invite everyone, young or old, to hear a message from the Bible. So let's go over to Lisa now. The Holy Spirit can give us courage to do the things we think we can't do and to be bold. He can give us love for ourselves that we can share with others. He can encourage us to keep on going when things are hard. And he can support us and help us make good decisions. He can give us peace when we're worried or anxious. And he can give us hope. God can use us to do something really special too. We have the ingredients inside us that he can use. We just need to let him use his power to help us. Let's start by reading some verses from the Bible. This is from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 17. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and is in you. Who was Jesus talking about there? Let's go on to read verse 25. I have told you this while I am still with you. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. Do you remember back in May we celebrated Pentecost, which was when, the day when 3,000 people became Christians. It was like the church's birthday. The Holy Spirit came to the disciples with wind and fire and helped them to do things they'd never been able to do before, like speak other languages and have the courage to speak in front of crowds of people. Sometimes we feel like we can't do things, or we'd like to change, but it's really hard and we can't do it ourselves. God sends the Holy Spirit to help us. Who do we go to for help? Sometimes we need to go to different people for help, depending on what the problem is. If we have a sore tooth, would we go to a firefighter? No, we'd probably go to a doctor or a dentist. If the car breaks down, do we go to a plumber? No, we go to a mechanic. The Holy Spirit can help us too. 
He is always there if we need him to help us and guide us. If we think of times or places we feel upset or lonely or sad, we can ask the Holy Spirit to help us in those times. He can be anywhere at any time. Dixie, we've just had your 100th birthday, because this is going out on Sunday, um, and uh, it'd be lovely just to say hello to you and celebrate with you with the rest of the church. Now, Dixie, you didn't actually start following Jesus until you were in your 40s. Yeah. But, yeah, how did that happen and what difference did it make? Uh, well, I always did have a basic belief in God. I brought up very high church. When I volunteered in 1940, I'd always been ill with pneumonia and my dad put his hands on my shoulder and said, may the holy angels guard you. Never been away from home before. And as many times, at least twice, I knew it was angels or God getting me out of danger. Next day I forgot about him because I wasn't in trouble. And then Lizzie started to pray for you. Yes. What happened then? That's lots, nothing outwardly, but inwardly I was searching for God, for something true in my life. And something very special happened one particular day, didn't it, Dixie? Yes, 13th of July, 1965, on a Tuesday. Uh, I remember it started before then, Lizzie started praying. And I was in church in London. We were saying the creed 
I said, if I believe in God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and you both, I thought, do I believe that? I said, yes, I believe it. And then on the third day, driving along the road, that's when it all happened, I believe. Like Jesus rose the third day, my belief came to life. Mm. And one of the things you've done since then has been sharing that faith in Jesus. How did that come about and, and you know, how's that been over all these years? Well, I knew it was a matter of life or death then, in that sense, because he gave me life, new life, Holy Spirit gives life. And I couldn't keep it to myself. So I started, I made a promise to talk to at least one new person every day. I remember doing that. I thought, God, I can relax for the rest of the day when I've done it once. <laughs> then I, God showed me, that's not right. Maybe it's not the right person I wanted you to talk to. So I wait for him. Okay. But basically, if you go back to John chapter 6, verse 66, a lot of disciples left Jesus. He said to the disciples, will you also go away? They said, Lord, we have believed and come to know you are the Christ. So when he called them, they knew he was a prophet, miracle worker, a man sent from God. But it took them some time to realize that he was the Christ. You got B-A-C-K, believe and come to know. A lot of Christians believe, but they don't let know the power of God in their own lives. Mm. That's what I share. Lovely. I just share what I've seen and heard God do in my life. And for healing, I'll just show you one. It's a real one. Edna Goff, the Goff's mother. She was sitting in the extension one morning and her leg, right leg, was all pink. And she said the medication not doing any good. So all of a sudden, it's nothing to do with me. My finger just went out and touched. And both of us saw it all, all red go. Couldn't believe it. Like Jesus said, he touched people. And as they went, they were healed. And I've seen that. I've seen many more miracles in my own life. But I don't talk about that because each person has their own gift. And I don't do it myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God does it. Yeah. Now, this might be a difficult question, Dixie, because I expect the answer would be too long. But as you look back over your life, what are the important things that you think God has given you? Uh, well, I've seen so much God given me, but his love, I was meditating, well, thinking this morning of all the marvellous things God showed me. I remember preaching once before you came. And there was a policeman in the congregation who came up to me after and said, while you were preaching or speaking, I saw Jesus and he was smiling at me. And that's happened once or twice. I was giving a uh, communion to someone. She came running up to me afterwards and said, I've been asking for Jesus to reveal himself. When he gave me the cup of wine, I didn't see you, I saw Jesus. Mm. So you never know when you're preaching. God can see, once you believe in Jesus Christ, he's in your heart, and people can see something different about you. Yeah. Yes. Whether you feel like it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Dixie. Congratulations. Lovely to celebrate with you uh, your 100th birthday, and thanks for sharing with us this morning. Oh, yes, keep trusting. Keep praying. Amen. Sort of thing. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think we've already had a picture this morning of why I love being part of this church. From our kind of 18 and 19 year olds um, having such fun singing we are marching and i just stood here with a big smile on my face um, watching them and joining in with them um, right through to dixie's hundredth birthday and the inspiration that that man has been to all of us um, this is family isn't it and uh, i just love that so 
Thank you, guys, everybody. If you've got a Bible to hand, the passage I'm going to be reading in a moment is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at verse 7. So 2 Corinthians 3, 7. <clears throat> what have the last couple of weeks been like for you? In some ways over the summer, it had begun to feel a bit like we were settling into a new normal. We knew the autumn and winter might look a bit different to the summer. Uh, when we'd experienced a reasonable amount of freedom to enjoy life and even for some of us to get away a bit. Uh, there's been a certain amount of anxiety still around, but on the whole, the beautiful weather has made many of us feel a lot more relaxed. And that's been good. Then September starts up. The schools go back, uh, and with those of you who are teachers having to deal with all of how that works, that means some people go back to the workplace and uh, that might be a relief. And then we get to the news this week that COVID figures are starting to rise again and the specter of some sort of lockdown is brought to us all over again. And then some are looking ahead to Christmas and wondering what on earth that's gonna look like this year. Uncertainty and perhaps anxiety is beginning to raise its ugly head again if it ever really went away. Uncertainty is probably a fact of life at the moment, but how can our faith in Jesus help us to overcome anxiety? What are the things we need to be reminded of uh, in order to help us uh, when those moments of anxiety come? In the passage I'm about to read, the main strand Paul is writing about is comparing the old covenant, the covenant God made with the people of Israel, with the new covenant, what God has brought into being through the death and resurrection of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And towards the end of the passage, Paul speaks about freedom, the freedom that we now have as part of God's new covenant people. So let's read the passage, 2 Corinthians 3, starting at verse 7. The old way, with laws etched in stone, led to death, though it began with such glory that the people of Israel could not bear to look at Moses' face. For his face shone with the glory of God, even though the brightness was already fading away. Should we expect far greater glory under the new way, now that the Holy Spirit is giving life? If the old way, which brings condemnation, was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way, which makes us right with God? In fact, that first glory was not glorious at all, compared with the overwhelming glory of the new way. So if the old way, which has been replaced, was glorious, how much more glorious is the new, which remains forever? Since this new way gives us, gives such confidence, we can be very, very bold. We aren't like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened, and to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. Yes, even today, when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. So we have this contrast going on between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old Covenant was based upon the law. If you remember, it was Moses who was God's chosen person in bringing down the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. And although the law was given as a, a gift from God, providing a, a way for his people to relate to him, it was imperfect. Imperfect because people inevitably failed to keep the law. 
resulting in separation from God. So in this sense, as we see in verse 7, the law brought death. God's longing was for his people to follow him and his ways, but inevitably they failed. However, Paul brings this contrast between the old covenant and the new covenant, declaring that God has put us back into a right relationship with himself, not because of what we're capable or incapable of doing, but because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Verse 10, we're told the old covenant was temporary, but Jesus came to fulfill the old covenant, bringing, being the only one who could keep the law perfectly, fulfill it once and for all. So through knowing Jesus, we are made righteous because Jesus has paid the price for our unrighteousness and has paved a way into that perfect place with God forever. The new covenant was the new way of making us right with God. In Paul's day, the Jews were continuing to live under the old covenant, and Paul describes it as having a veil over their heart. Picking up the language from Moses' experience on Mount Sinai, where he needed a veil to cover his face. And Paul says it's like a veil is hiding Christ from the people of the old covenant. But when someone turns to God by faith in Jesus, that veil is removed. How are you getting on with face coverings? There's some very pretty patterned ones around, aren't there? They've become the norm, haven't they, in shops and other places. But there's still so much about them that just doesn't feel right. We can't see each other's facial expressions to start with. Um, with facial expressions, that's such a powerful way of communicating. Uh, face coverings can be hot and uncomfortable, so I've discovered. And if you wear glasses, they so easily get tangled up if you're not careful, which is a real pain. But we know that we need to follow the rules, but covering our face does, not, does seem to limit our freedom in so many ways. And the veil that covered Moses' face was a symbol of how a relationship with God was veiled or limited in the Old Testament. And Paul tells us that now with the new covenant established through the cross, the veil has been taken away, bringing freedom and confidence through the coming of the Spirit. Every nation has a national symbol. For England, it's the lion. For Wales, it's the dragon. For Canada, it's the maple leaf. And the Old Testament people of Israel had a national symbol. It was the vine. It was a symbol that they were planted by God as the vine to bear fruit for him. They were his chosen people. They were meant to be a living advert for how amazing it was to have God as their God. But sadly and inevitably, they never lived up to what they were meant to be. They kept turning away from God and worshipping other things. They turned from his ways of serving and blessing the world around them and became shambles. And God came to the point of saying to them that they were like a failed vineyard, vineyard that only bore bad fruit. And that was the, the sad outcome of the old covenant. And then Jesus arrived saying, I am the true vine. This wasn't just some random claim, it was loaded. The vine was what the people of God in the Old Testament were meant to be, but never able to be. They were a ruined vine and basically a picture of us all, if we're honest, because none of us by nature can be who we're meant to be, who God intended us to be, who we sense we should be. And in those odd moments, we know we want to be. If we're honest, we're far from all that God calls us to be. We might be pretty good by our own standards, but how about by God's standards? Which is why Jesus said, I am the true vine. Like 
the people of Israel, we can never wholly be the kind of people God intends us to be. But thankfully, Jesus doesn't say, I am the true vine, so you be the true vine as well. He doesn't kind of stand aloof and say, just copy me. Rather, he talks about being grafted into him, being like a branch grafted into the vine. We often sit in our garden, we've got a big sky here, and we watch the planes high up overhead going off to far-flung spaces and try to guess where they might be going depending on which direction they're going. And uh, we'll never guess rightly, but it's good fun. But if we see a plane flying from London to say, I don't know, Cape Town, and you think, I wanna do what that plane's doing, you've got two options. You can try and copy the plane, you know, run along the runway with your arms stretched out and try to do what the plane is doing. Or you can get inside the plane and then what the plane is doing, you are automatically doing. And that's what Jesus is inviting us to do. Jesus says, I am the new vine. Climb on inside me, come inside with me and join me be grafted into me, become a branch attached to this vine. And then all of his spiritual life and vitality will flow through us. Jesus said, apart from him, we can do no good things, but connected to him, we cannot fail to bear fruit. He invites us into himself to find a life in him. And Paul says in verse 17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's no point trying to find freedom by running down the runway with our arms outstretched. True freedom comes from being in the vine with the life of Christ flowing through us. I don't know what this looks like in your life. I know for me, there are times when I'm in that place of doing things in God's strength, and uh, having that assurance and peace that comes from him. And there are times when I'm not. Those times when it feels more like I am running down the runway with my arms outstretched, trying to follow Jesus in my own strength. But verse 18 gives us a picture of, of how God is in the transformation business. And to be a Christian means to go on being changed into Christ's image, a lifelong process as we allow his life, the life of the Spirit, to flow through us. It's through our successes, our failures, our sufferings, that he works within us both individually and as Christian communities to make us more and more like Jesus, giving us confidence and assurance and peace through his Spirit at work in us. God offers us hope through our relationship with him. <laughs> he doesn't deny our fears and our anxieties, but as we submit our lives to be grafted into his life, he offers us an unshakable foundation in who he is, who we are and whose we are, speaking those words into our hearts of his love for us as his dearly loved children. We have no idea what tomorrow, let alone next week, will bring, but God is our hope in every circumstance as we draw on his life through his spirit. Shall we just pray for a moment? Father God, we thank you for all that you have done for us through the cross. Thank you that your desire is that we know your strength and your peace in every circumstance of our lives. And I pray that whatever is going on for us today, that we may be those who abide in you, that we may be those who know the life of Jesus flowing through us. Today and every day, for his sake, Amen.
So as we come to pray together now, we are going to be turning our focus to praying for students and universities. To help us with this, um, Ellie, who's been one of our interns over the summer, is going to be sharing with us a short video um, where she describes some of the things she thinks uh, would be helpful for us to pray for for universities as she goes back to university. Um, but also we've got a video from Fusion, um, who is our who are our mission partners for this month. And Fusion is a um, student ministry 
um, which looks to equip um, churches in university towns. Um, and they're going to be sharing some of um, their prayer requests for the challenges they have in the coming months. So let's turn to listen to Ellie now. Great. So this morning we have Ellie with us, who um, is about to head off to uni. So Ellie, it's great to have you with us. Um, I guess my first question is, uh, what have you been doing over the past couple of weeks in your unexpectedly long summer? I've been um, one of the 2020 interns here at St George's. So me, along with um, Freya, Johnny and Moo, We've been helping out with a few things. You might know me as Dr. Gary and <laughs> doing some of the children's stuff. Yeah, and just um, helping out with the live stream. Great. So where? So thank you for all that you've been doing. We've particularly enjoyed Dr. Gary and his various adventures on Sunday mornings. <laughs> um, where are you going and what are you doing? So I'm going back into my second year in Leeds. Um, to do music again. So I was doing maths and music, but now I'm switching because maths was horrific. So yeah, I'm doing my own music degree. Um, yeah, so I'll be heading off there. Um, oh, by this time this comes out, I will have gone already, which is weird. <laughs> but, so I'll be going back to some of my church stuff in Leeds. Um, but my St George's in Leeds as well, which is a bit confusing. But that will be online at the moment. Um, and then we've got some of the Christian Union stuff happening. So fingers crossed things will be going back to normal soon. Yeah, I can imagine um, obviously going back to university in these strange circumstances is a bit unknown, um, as, as are most things at the moment. But um, what, what's your Christian community like at um, in at university in Leeds? Are you kind of involved in the CU quite heavily or what, what, what does your CU and your church do whilst you're there? So um, the church that I'm at um, is very student based which is nice there. Last year there were about 80 students in my church which was really nice so we did have something called student teas where they would make food for us just before the service um, and then the service would start at 6.30 and we'd all go there but obviously that's not happening at the moment so we're going to be watching the service in small groups which should be nice so a lot of people in my house go to the same church as me and then the Christian Union I think we're putting on a lot of doing things for freshers try and help them get involved and hopefully we'll know more when we go back because it's all a bit up in the air at the moment. Great. How can um, how can we be praying for you as you as you move back to university? Uh, I think one of the main things is uh, Leeds is on the watch list for the high risk cities. So it's the uncertainty of that is quite um, nerve wracking. Um, so just that things will be more certain when we go back, whether we go back into lockdown or not um, in Leeds. And then the other thing, um, just that I managed to keep really building with my faith when I go back as church won't be the same as it was before great well of course we'll be praying for those um things in the weeks to come but um thank you so much for all that you've done in the past couple of weeks and months um we've really um really appreciated all your hard work and all that you've brought to it and obviously we'll be praying for you as you go back to Leeds so thank you Ellie and um have fun thank you bye now Hi St George's, my name is Fumi and I work for Fusion, a movement passionate that every student has the opportunity to find hope in Jesus and home in the local church. We exist to serve local churches with the tools and confidence to love, welcome and disciple students. So please do join us in praying that more of this vision would be realised. We would love to see student work advance and for local churches to start student work from scratch, even in a pandemic. Um, but firstly, thank you for making us your mission partner this month. It means a lot to us to have your support and prayers backing this movement and say thank you. 
there's always lots to, to pray for, but I'll try and not be too greedy with this list. Um, so a few things we'd love prayer for is, um, one, try church. We're currently only 1% of students are part of a church family. Try Church is a campaign with an invite to any and every student to try something new at university and try church where they can be welcomed with loving arms by the local church. In partnership with local churches, we host Try Church stands on campus, inviting students to download the Student Link Up app and give one or two or three churches a visit for the first time. We also have lots of exciting adverts and videos with this invite to Try Church that will be advertised with universities. So please pray for this, that it will be fruitful and that a generation of students with Try Church this year and encounter God's love and join his family. Secondly, please pray for 61, which is an exciting festival next year that we will be hosting in partnership with New Wine. This festival is a space for students and young adults to prioritise the presence of God, communion with Jesus and with each other. So please pray for the planning and preparation for this exciting new Young Adults Festival that will hopefully be taking place next summer. And thirdly, please keep the Fusion team in your prayers as we seek to connect and serve and equip the local churches to do student work really well and to help students be bold in sharing their faith with their friends. Please pray for us as a team, for more of God's wisdom, for more of God's creativity and for more of God's provision as we outwork our calling. Thank you so much um, St George's for praying. May God continue to bless and strengthen you in Jesus name. Thank you again and, and lots of love. Bye. Father God, we pray now for um, the things we've just heard about, for the students um, which we have um, going off to university. Father God, thank you so much for the history that you have of using uh, the years which people spend at university powerfully for the sake of your kingdom, Lord. I pray that as um, people return to university now, I pray that you'll still be using those times, even in the midst of the uncertainty which they might be facing. Um, bring peace, Lord, um, and be working, I pray. Father God, we pray for um, national, um, national campaigns like Fusion, who are looking to equip and support um, the local church as they look to minister to, um, to students. In new, in new towns and new cities, Lord. I pray for um, Fusion and its um, national kind of tri-church campaign. Father God, we, we thank you for that and we thank you for the vision they have for that, for integrating students into the local church. And I just pray that you'll be blessing that campaign, even if they have to adopt slightly different ways of going about things than they might have in the past. Father God, we pray also as they um, make plans for um for this 61 um conference they're running alongside new wine in the coming year father god i pray that you'll have your hands over all of those arrangements give them confidence about what they will and will not be able to do and yeah lord i just pray that you'll be blessing um them in their in their planning but also be blessing the students who you are looking to bring to that um that conference father god, we pray also for the fusion team just bless them with energy um, bless them with um confidence and bless them um, with the trust um, that comes with knowing that you are their god you are their provider uh, you are their good father father god we pray that this um year um for students nationally um but also the students which we know who are going off to university um, from st george's lord i pray that it will still be a year which you um grow them you use them um you build them up for the sake of your kingdom we pray for our um, interns, we pray for Johnny, we pray for Miriam, we pray for Ellie, all to say head off to university in the coming weeks, Lord. I pray that you'll have your hands upon them as they as they make those journeys, Lord. I pray that they'll be safe um, and I pray that you'll really bless that time to them. Father God, as we look more broadly beyond the challenges which, um, which particular students are particularly facing at the moment, Lord, we pray also um, for um, the, the coronavirus situation more broadly, Lord. 
we pray um, about the kind of increase in cases. Father God, we pray that you'll kind of you, you'll, you'll bring an end to that. You'll you'll draw um, the momentum out of that, um, and that actually it'll be brought under control. Father, we pray for all those who need to have access to services will have access easily, and um, that you'll be kind of you'll be working against this this um, virus through that. And Father God, we pray for um, also for intervention for all those on the front lines who are intervening to um, help people who are unwell or who are intervening to um, to make decisions which help keep people safe. Lord, I pray that you'll be there in those decisions. You'll give wisdom and you'll give effectiveness. Father, we lift all these things to you to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we draw to the end of our service this morning, um, I for one am really thankful for everything that Sheila brought to us, that reminder um, that the cross of Christ bridges that gap, which we would not have otherwise been able to bridge. And um, the amazing hope that we have for ourselves and for the world by that, um, that we are that true vine. Um, we are that, have that intimate relationship with God, which cannot be broken. Um, and that, I guess, speaks into um, something which our prayer team have um, been reflecting on this morning as they've been praying into this service. Um, the prayer team kind of got two, two verses for us, which um, they'd like to highlight 
So in the first verse is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, and it says this. But he said to, the, said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. The second verse, which the um, prayer team wanted to share with us this morning, comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. And it says this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. They just wanted to remind us, and I think it, it tunes in so well with what Sheila came to share, that God's grace is sufficient for us in times of turbulence, even in the midst of the unknowns particularly we have coming into this week. So just to share some family news as well as we come to the end of our service, um, just, to, just to point out, so the youth and children's work is getting underway again um, from this week. Um, so the youth groups both um, Emerge, which meets on Monday evenings, and Pulse, which meets on Sunday evenings, um, they are getting underway. Um, so if you're a regular member of those um, or your, your child is, then do look out for information as that comes through. Uh, we'll be glad to, to see everybody again and um, be able to meet with those communities. And in, in a similar way, um, some of the children's work has been getting on. So um, surfers went to um, play mini golf together um, in the past week. And there is an ongoing conversation about actually how they can continue to meet in the, in the coming weeks and months. So keep your ears to the ground for that. Um, another thing that's going on, uh, quite, quite a big thing for me, I guess, is uh, I'm getting ordained next Saturday. Well, I'm due to be getting ordained next Saturday. So um, that will be happening at Canterbury Cathedral. Very exciting occasion, quite a big moment. Um, so we are looking forward to that. Um, hoping we can go ahead smoothly. Um, and another thing also to point out, um, quite significant, so please do make a note. Um, YouTube has changed its um, policy, so we can now only stream to one platform at a time. So from next week, we will only be streaming onto YouTube. So sadly, our, our time with Twitch is coming to an end, um, but YouTube is, is just as um, usable, um, perhaps more familiar to more of you than Twitch. Um, so that's where we'll be from now on. So let's just um, close our, our time together in prayer. Father God, thank you so much um, for all that you've done this morning, all that you've um, said to us through um, through the, the words of uh, which she has brought to us um, and through through your um, Bible as, as we've been reading this morning. Thank you for that reminder of that intimate relationship we can have with you. And thank you for the source of hope and strength that that can be um, in the midst of these turbulent times. Father God, as we confront a week which perhaps has some slight more, slightly more uncertainty um, than the past few weeks, Lord. I pray that we'll be able to lean on you um, in a new way um, and find a renewed strength that comes from that intimate relationship, Lord. May it give us hope and may by our confidence in that hope, may we be able to share that hope with the rest of the world around us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's, that's it for this week and we really look forward to um, joining together next week but in the meantime i hope you have a good week bye now